Hello world! Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we are diving deeper into an exciting topic we started. Converting your Wi-Fi slot into an M.2 NVMe SSD slot. Most probably, you remember my Lenovo IdeaPad 520 from our last video. That's right, I'm bringing it back into the spotlight because I also wanted to show you the final result after plugging in the adapter. Let's start by carefully removing the back cover of the laptop. We will do this by unscrewing all the screws. Then I am going to remove the hard disk caddy that I also mentioned on my previous videos. And now the back cover is off. Here you can see the adapter holding the M.2 NVMe hard disk that I have previously installed. It is fascinating how this little piece of technology can make such a difference. In addition to revisiting the adapter, I'm also planning to attach a copper heatsink. We will compare the thermal performance before and after its installation to see how well it manages head. Be sure to stay tuned for that in a future video. Now, let's talk about the adapter itself. It's quite versatile, allowing you to adjust its size based on your SSD. For my setup, I used a 2230 size SSD, which meant cutting the adapter to fit precisely. It's a straightforward process that significantly expands the capabilities of our laptop. I have also acquired a new M.2 NVMe SSD for my another laptop trial. This is a Samsung PM991A NVMe. According to Samsung's website, this type of SSD boosts impressive speeds with sequential reads of up to 3100 megabytes per second and sequential writes of 1300 megabytes per second. This variety in sizes and easy installation process make these adapters incredibly useful for upgrading older laptops. Speaking of older laptops, let's shift our focus to this Sony laptop I have. It's a much older model, the VGN NS 31st ST, and it raises an interesting question. Can we use this adapter across all laptops? First, try to answer this for this laptop. So, in the beginning, we need to do our homework by researching the adapter specifications. For instance, this laptop uses the mobile Intel PM45 Express chipset as I discovered in the Sony website. Here is the datasheet of this chipset and block diagram. Given its age, I am a little bit skeptical about NVMe support on the motherboard, meaning booting from it might not be feasible. But we are here to explore and learn more together. To find out what slots your motherboard has, I recommend using a tool like HWinfo64, a free system information and diagnostics tool that I have covered in previous videos. It provides detailed information about your motherboard, including the slots available. Opening HWinfo64 and navigating to the motherboard section reveals the types of slots available. On my Lenovo IdeaPad 520, for instance, we will find PCI Express X1 and X4 slots. Now, let's open up the back cover of this Sony laptop, which has quite a few screws. So, I will fast forward through this part. With the back cover off, we are greeted by the wireless LAN card an Intel 512AN HMW. A quick internet search tells us it's a half mini PCIe card. This is very important information because the adapter I used in the Lenovo laptop was for 
a key A plus E slot, not a mini PCIe slot. And you see in here the difference. This mismatch highlights the importance of knowing your slot type before purchasing an adapter. Unfortunately, our adapter won't fit here and we cannot use this hard disk for this slot with this adapter. But there is always a way. Given this, we will need a different adapter that is compatible with the mini PCIe slot for this Sony laptop. It's a great reminder that adapters serve various purposes and are specific to certain slot types. We will explore the suitable adapter and its performance in a future video. So make sure to stay curious and keep following our journey. Thank you for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Stay curious and stay tuned.